And Mark, now it is time to end the podcast talking about the team that won the NFC East last year. And we are talking about the Dallas Cowboys. Welcome into Jerry World, everybody. Me and uh, Mark Weber talking about some Dallas Cowboys. No, we're not in Jerry World. We're in the MVP studios. I can't trick you guys. You guys know that we're you not guys, in Jerry World. You guys can tell this isn't Jerry money. <laughs> you, you guys can tell that Jerry Jones didn't pay for anything in this room. But here, here's the thing I want to start with with this team. Yeah. And I think it's kind of a similar question to the Giants in a way. Can Dak and Zeke replicate what they did last season, or are we going to see a fall off from them and this team in 2017? Well, I mean, it's, it's kind of a, a little bit of a silly question, Ricky, only because a fall off from 3-13 and 13 is still going to be a really good record. Uh, are but, they going to come back down to earth? Is that how you want me to phrase it? Yeah, I, mean, I, think, <laughs> I think that's a little bit a little bit more appropriate. Uh, yeah, I mean, I definitely don't expect another 13-3 and three record out mm-hmm. of them. Uh but I still expect them to be in the hunt for the division win and to possibly be the best team in the NFC next year. Um, there's going to be certainly more competition for that this year than the last, mm-hmm. but it's definitely something that's likely for them. They had uh, one of the best running games. They had a very good, effective passing game. I use the word effective because they're not lights out. They mm-hmm. just don't make dumb mistakes. Uh, and because they had such a great running game, their defense performed better than they probably should uh, and that you'd probably expect them to. And not to mention the fact that, you know, who uh, is the defensive coordinator is Rod Marianelli, a guy mm-hmm. who says, we take the ball. And what did the Dallas Cowboys do very well last year? Force fumbles. Yeah, they took the ball. And the thing that I like defensively is their first three picks in the first, second, and third round of this past um, April's draft, all defense. Late in the first round, taking Taco Charlton. I loved Taco when we were doing our mock drafts. And then yeah. also going cornerback, cornerback with um, a woozy out of Colorado. I thought that he might have been able to creep up into the late first as we got closer to the draft. And then also Jordan Lewis, who was also in first-round discussions throughout the entire mock draft process. So they really get potentially, depending on who you're talking to mock draft wise, they potentially could get three guys that are first round potential in the first three rounds to help out that defense. The only thing and the only question I have about this team, because they're going to be good again. It's every team has like, we've been saying the entire podcast, every team has a chance to win the division but let's be honest, it's probably going to come down between the Cowboys and the Giants Redskins. Yeah. Like, unless the Giants fall off, it's going to be Giants and Cowboys. But really, this division is the Cowboys to lose because I look at their team and the offensive line, for the most part, I believe, stays intact. They still have the same wide receivers. The new addition is um, Ryan Switzer, who they got in the draft. They still got Zeke, they still got McFadden, they still got Alfred Morris. My big question, though, for this team is the wide receiver core. Des Bryant last year wasn't even the main guy for Dak Prescott. It was basically Cole Beasley was the main number one receiver that got most of the targets from Dak Prescott. Is this wide receiver core going to be able, I know that it's, you might be saying, well, Ricky, it's a system thing. Don't turn over the ball, and they have success. Are they going to need Dez to step up? Are they going to need to have somebody step up to a kind of dominant performance level because I look at this team and I go, you didn't add anything. Usually, like, we see the rest of the teams, and we're talking about what they added, added, added in these big key starter spots. I look at the Cowboys and – they didn't add much in the starter spot. They didn't add any huge free agents yeah, like they didn't we need saw the to. other team. Yeah, they didn't need to. I mean, it's a 13-3 and three team. I mean, mm-hmm. there's not too many holes that need to be fixed. What they really got was a lot of guys who are solid contributors, especially on that defense. I mean, this offense didn't really need anything because mm-hmm. you got Zeke out there 
who is, you know, 1,600 yards last year. Uh, Dak doesn't make mistakes. He performs very uh, methodically out there, which is what you want. You want this slow-moving offense that's going to result in scored points. Mm -hmm. And then this defense does what a Marianelli defense should do, which is take the ball away. They can get a little bit more of that, then this team just becomes incredibly deadly. Uh, And, yeah, we want to see more out of Des Bryant. We want to see the Des Bryant that performed really well with Tony Romo, Mm -hmm. um, not yet retired quarterback Tony Romo, that is. Um, But he's no longer with the Cowboys, which I think will be important for this season because last year we had the whole drama of Every week. who's going to start, who who should start. Dak can now be the Cowboys' starting quarterback. Yeah, every damn week we had to listen to that <laughs> or talk about it. Or we it. had to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, because it kept coming up. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I mean, for 100%, this is Dak Prescott's team now. Um, nothing is going to change that. Some week, I'm sure, Jerry Jones is going to say some really dumb comment about Oh, yeah, Tony Romo still doesn't have a job. And then there it goes. Now we're talking about it again. Uh, But, yeah, I mean, with Cole Beasley being uh, a great weapon, Des Bryant with Jason Witten, and then, of course, uh, with Zeke and McFadden, you have so many weapons out there. You have so much you can utilize. This offense should continue to be great. This defense is going to be helped out a lot by how much time the offense is going to take off the clock. So that way they are very fresh uh, when they go out there, and that's going to make this defense perform very well. I have high hopes for the Dallas Cowboys this coming year. The problem that I have is just that on paper, I like the New York Giants mm-hmm. a lot. I like them on paper. It's the just one, that when it comes to the field, the one team they couldn't the beat, Cowboys do a little bit better. The one yeah. team they couldn't beat at all is the Giants swept the mm-hmm. um, season series from the Cowboys. Last season, and I mean, looking at this year, I mean, the schedule holders didn't do them a ton of favors as they have the Atlanta Falcons on the road on their schedule at one point. They have a brutal, brutal three-game stretch week 14 through 16 where not only are you going to New York to play the Giants, then you got to go to Oakland, so you're flying. I know it's like it's not the same as basketball. You have a week between games. But you're basically flying cross-country almost. You're flying back to Dallas and then out to Oakland. And then week 16, you got to play the Seattle Seahawks. I mean, nothing is very very good about that whole end of the schedule. I mean, once they – well, I mean, I don't know because the only – Once you get past the bye, the only games that are easy are the Niners and the Chargers. Yeah, that's what I was basically (laughs) going to say is that you had that Chargers game in there. And I mean, you look uh, at – That's about it. And you look at besides that, I don't think – Denver I'm not high on, Mm -hmm. but they're not a cupcake. Really, the only one out of those first four that's a cupcake is the Rams. Yeah. Depending on how the Cardinals want to do this year. And the big thing is going to be for the Dallas Cowboys is that they have to play Dallas Cowboy football. Mm -hmm. Slow methodical, run the ball a lot, make smart decisions, move the chains, keep that defense fresh, keep the other offense off the field, and you're good. I mean, this team scored a lot of points last year. They didn't let teams score points on them. John Madden says that's how you win games. I like John Madden. I mean, it it honestly comes Mm -hmm. to me very simply. This team took the ball away. They gave their offense opportunities. They gave their offense good opportunities with good field, uh, not a lot of field they had to cover, so they definitely did a lot of favors. I'm going to say this. The schedule makers gave the Cowboys one favor. Do you want to know what that favor was? Sure. From week 11 to week 14. So you got week 11, it's a Sunday game, Sunday night game against Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got a Thursday game, so you have a short week. But who's that short week against? The Chargers. Not a tough opponent. Well, I mean, Charger fans are going to get mad at Not you. the toughest of opponents. on the. There are a lot of mm-hmm. games that I would put as tougher on this schedule. Then you basically get a week off because your next game's a Thursday game, a Thursday night game on um, NBC on November 30th. It's Thanksgiving game. And then you get a longer week to prepare for the Giants that next week on a Sunday. So basically what they did was they said, well, we gave you a short week, but you get to play the Chargers. Then you get a week off from Thursday to Thursday, and then we'll give you a little bit extra time to prepare for those Giants. That's that's mm-hmm. the only favor I see in this schedule, if you yeah. can see it as a yeah. favor. It's going to be tough. 
it certainly will be tough. They have to be on point. Everything's got to perform as well as mm-hmm. it can. Otherwise, it's a team that falls into the lowest I think they could fall into is the 9-7 and seven trap. Mm-hmm. And then they're competing for the wild card. And the only reason is not because Dallas Cowboys are a bad team. It's not because I want to knock anything on this team because they are probably the most complete team, uh, one of the most complete teams in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just that they have so many difficult teams they got to play. That's really what it comes down to. They're going to play so many difficult teams. And, you know, this, uh, you know, they could have had an easier NFC North opponent. You know, they could have played the Bears. They could have, I'm, don't get mad at me, Lions fans, but they could have played the Lions. Mm-hmm. No, they got to play the Packers. You know, they got to play, <laughs> they got to play, if anybody can dissect. They could, have played, they could have played the Bears. Yeah. If anyone can dissect this defense. And just say, you did it last year in the hey, playoffs. I don't care if you're not giving me many opportunities to be on the field because I'm going to take advantage of my <laughs> oh, opportunities. Oh, wait, that's what, Aaron Rodgers. What late game, late game situation? Hey, Hail Mary. Oh, there's Jared Cook. What up? He basically <laughs> says, I don't even care. Let's just do one throw. If I get it in, I win the game. I don't, I don't even care. I don't even care. All but, I need is one throw. But yeah, this season, and the thing that I wanted to bring up, and this is what I've been thinking about this through this entire segment. Out of the two we mentioned earlier, of course, Dak and Zeke are the ones I'm talking about. I want to say out of the two, because like how I mentioned, oh, are they going to take a step back? Are they going to come back down to earth? Out of the two, if you said, Ricky, you've got to pick one. Which one do you think is going to have a sophomore slump? Between Zeke and Dak. Between Zeke and Dak. Is it stupid to say or is it dumb to say that, you know what? I think Zeke might be one that has a sophomore slump this season. Meaning that his productivity and his numbers from last year are a little bit less or significantly mm-hmm. less. Well, he was a monster still last good. year. I but mean, he was a monster last year. So, I mean, mm-hmm. it's a tough thing to say because you have a guy who performed at a very uh, effective but average uh, performance in Dak Prescott and then mm-hmm. an absolute monster that's Ezekiel Elliott. If one of them is going to fall, it's going to be Zeke. Uh, not to say that Dak Prescott can't have the worst season we've ever seen last year. Anything's possible. Uh, but the guy just makes smart decisions. I don't expect mm-hmm. him to do anything that's going to uh, bring him too far down because he already is basically you know, down to earth mm-hmm. here. It's Zeke that's at that uh, stratosphere type of level. Uh, so and if like anyone has all, to, it's And Zeke. we've already seen, I know that this is different, but it, I kind of put it in there of we've already seen examples during the offseason of Hey Zeke, keep a lower profile, man. Keep keep a lower profile. There have been instances with Zeke where he's in the news for non football reasons. Mm-hmm. I know it's nothing like nothing as bad as what we're used to talking about. Think two years ago with this cowboy team where we're talking about Greg Hardy and everything. But I still look at it and I wonder if those are indicators of yeah, maybe Zeke might fall fall back a little bit, and it might be Dak is still at that stratosphere level, and Zeke kind of fell down because it's like, oh, I'm going to re- rely more on my— Well, Zeke was never at the stratosphere level. I mean, he got a lot of hype, but he just performed I mean, 1,500 above 1,500 yards is pretty good. He performed very above-average quarterback. Mm-hmm. The thing for Zeke was—I'm mean, I'm sorry. The thing for Zach, Dak <laughs> is just that he didn't— make mistakes i think like that that is the big number that i think puts him at the stratosphere level of last year of he didn't turn the ball over how many games like we were counting games where it's like wow he has started to see what was it 10 11 games before he threw an interception he was doing great i just think that for me it's hard when i think of stratosphere i'm thinking aaron Rodgers. i'm thinking drew tom brady's tom brady i think those guys who are going to put up five thousand yards mm-hmm. and score 40 touchdowns you know hey, i'm exaggerating I mean, but let's, you get put, it. let's put it this way one hail mary doesn't happen he's playing in the nfc title game yeah. in dallas and it's not in atlanta sure sure i don't necessarily think that makes a stratosphere quarterback though well i'm just saying he could he could maybe have gotten there because if he beats Atlanta, then beats Tom Brady. Yeah. Like, if if Dak went on, and I know this is a different conversation that we intended to get into, but mm-hmm. if he would have went on to beat Aaron Rodgers, beat Matt Ryan, beat Tom Brady. That I would have been great. We, I think we would 
with what we are in society is, uh-huh. we'd crown his ass. It's oh, like, we, you know what? we definitely would. You're king of the mountaintop. Joe right Flacco now. got crowned when he won a Super Bowl, and it mm-hmm. wasn't Joe Flacco's only, you know, he, Joe Flacco wasn't the only guy in that football field. Yeah. Like Dak Prescott wouldn't have been the only guy. Mm-hmm. I think Zeke would have gotten himself a lot of hype, and if one of these guys, unless we're playing completely hypothetical here, but if they had won a Super Bowl, I would have fully expected Zeke to be the guy getting that MVP as opposed to Dak, unless Dak went out there and threw five touchdowns. Let me ask you this, and this will be kind of my thing to wrap it all up. This is in relation to what I asked you about the Giants. The Giants mm-hmm. one was about percentage of can they win the division. Yep. Right now, as we are sitting here July 3rd, almost okay. July 4th, Game close. what's your percentage mm-hmm. that the Cowboys win the Super Bowl in 2018? Well, 2017, uh, 2018. I mean, that that's such a hard thing because of so many teams. Um, I'll just say that their their main competitors are going to be the obvious ones, like uh, like the Patriots, um, the Falcons. Packers. As long as they don't have a complete fall off, the Packers the are Giants. always going to be there. Uh, Seahawks, Giants, mm-hmm. these type of teams are always going to be there and always going to be competing. I mean, even the I Oakland like how, Raiders. I like how you. Okay, I'm like I like how you named one AFC team. No, I have, before the Raiders. I got those Raiders in there. Uh, <laughs> You know, there, there's always going to be those guys who are going to compete. We're not going to throw the Steelers out there because they'll just play the Patriots in the playoffs and lose. Yeah, the That's Steelers, usually what happens. The in, like, Steelers just teams. get the worst luck. <laughs> uh, they really do. And it's not even that they, like, get bad calls or anything. Uh-huh. It's just that they always run into Tom Brady. Uh, and that's just going to bring Bill them down. Bilicek. Yeah, and that one time they ran into Aaron Rodgers. Mm-hmm. Um, so they just run into damn good quarterbacks. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I, I sympathize. I sympathize about running into damn good quarterbacks. Um <laughs> You know, I I mean, it, it's so hard to say a percent that makes sense. Um, I don't think it's likely. You don't think it's likely? I don't think it's likely. I'm going to say at this point, it's got to be a, at least 70% chance. You're saying a 70% chance that the Cow- that the Dallas Cowboys are going to win the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. That means all 32 other teams, 30% is divided between all 32 other teams. Okay, 60. I'll bump it down to 40%. 60. 40% is divided well, between all other teams. To me, this year, I have, and this will kind of narrow it down for you guys. Uh-huh. I really have like maybe five, four teams that could win the Super Bowl. So this each of year. them on average get 10%. Yeah. I mean, to me, the, the teams that I am looking at right now, and this will be spoiler alert for mm-hmm. my pre for my prediction, and it could change. It could change. But right now, the Cowboys are one. The Patriots are the other, the Falcons, the Packers, and then I'll put, you know what, six, Seahawks and Raiders. Those, to me, are the ones I'm looking at as my favorites. Your early favorites. To win the Super Bowl. I yeah. mean, yeah, Chief fans are going to get upset, Bronco fans, Steeler fans will get upset, maybe even Raven fans because they're kind of excited for this year. But to me, mm-hmm. those are the six teams. I think that the AFC is a little bit more shut down than the NFC because really, to me, the Patriots, Patriots are like The Patriots, yeah. if they get on a roll, they're just going to win the AFC. The NFC, I think that... Because it's hard for me to look at the Cowboys and I look at them and I go, you you played so well last year and really, like, the reason that they didn't make the Super Bowl, I know they would have had to play the Falcons and that game could have went anyway, but... You really, it was one lucky Aaron Rodgers play. And just look at the Detroit Lions. They'll be they'll be just sitting in their recliner going like, <laughs> you think you got it rough. Just go to our games when we play yeah. the Green Bay Packers. One lucky play kept mm-hmm. them from... I mean, I would, it's, I it's one Hail getting, Mary. It's called I, a Hail Mary for a reason. I would say getting to the Super Bowl. I would say if that Hail Mary never happened... We would have been looking at Patriots, Cowboys. I still think the Falcons would have beat the Cowboys. I I mean, I would have liked that because I didn't like the Cowboys last year. And the Cowboys are kind of like my New York Yankees. Mm -hmm. They're they're my they're my team that if they lose, I'm happy. The Yankees aren't like that much anymore because I like Aaron Judge. But Mm -hmm. the Yankees throughout my life have been that team that I just love. Damn America's team thing. Uh, It's it's not America's team. It's not my team. I'm an American. It's not my team. Yeah, I, 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 it's unfortunate for the Dallas Cowboys mm-hmm. that they get that 
level that of moniker. hatred and stuff because of mm-hmm. things like that. Of course, you know what? I'd rather go to the Dallas Cowboys because if it wasn't them, it'd be the Green Bay Packers. Yeah. I'm a Bears fan, <laughs> and I can't handle that. And the one, I can't handle the Packers being America's team. And before I wrap this up, I just got to say your remark about uh, mm-hmm. where you're like, yeah, I know about uh, running into good quarterbacks. The only time Mark's team made it to the Super Bowl in his lifetime, what quarterback did you run into? I don't remember what you're talking about. Peyton Manning. That's who he ran into. I don't Peyton remember. Manning when the Bears lost. I remember 07. one play, <laughs> and it was a damn good one. Who 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 was who was that play? Oh, Devin Hester. Oh yeah, mm. Devin Hester. And then first time in history. And then black. It. And then black from there on out. I'm Mark pretty sure they won. <laughs> I don't know. But Could this, be wrong. But this is where you guys come in. Let us know down below. What do you guys think about any team in the uh, NFC East? The Cowboys, the Giants, the Redskins. Let us know either on Twitter, at Ricky Widmer, at Mark Weber, down below in the comment section. If you're on YouTube, thank you guys for watching. If you're on Blog Talk Radio, thank you guys for giving us the listen and the download. Mark and I will be back in two weeks. I will be back next week. Mark, I should have said this at the beginning. I am going to say it now for everyone else. Everyone, give Mark a congratulations in the comment section. The next time you guys see his wonderful face, he will be a married man. So give Mark all the love in the world. That's actually why he will not be here next week. He'll be enjoying his honeymoon as Sean and I will preview the AFC East. But I want to thank you guys for checking us out. And as always, have a good day, everybody.